Coach Jengris, give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. All right, sounds good. All right, hey, good evening, everyone. Thanks for uh, taking some time out of your day to uh, uh, join us and, and talk a little bit of football and talk a little bit about uh, uh, what the season's going to look like um, and, all, and all the things that are, are going to transpire this year. Um, before we, we get going uh, and, and get into really the nuts and bolts, I, I just want to kind of say thank you to uh, Coach Kelly Greer. Uh, she's on here. She's our athletic director, and she's really kind of been instrumental in uh, uh, getting uh, a plan together that's going to uh, safely uh, allow our athletes to participate in football, and it's been a huge undertaking, I know. And she's received, um, uh, I don't know, hundreds of messages and, and emails and whatever else from me. So uh, uh, we, we really couldn't have even gotten to this point without Coach Greer, so I appreciate that, Coach Greer. Hey, guys, you're welcome. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm, I'm going to share my screen here and it's, it has our presentation on it. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about all the, the COVID stuff that's going on and how we're going to get back to football. Uh, once we're finished with that, we're, uh, uh, we're going to move into our first year uh, player parent orientation. Uh, those people that have been around our program, you're welcome to leave. You can hang out if you want, or you're welcome to leave. And we'll kind of talk about our expectations and, uh, um, the philosophy of our program and, and some of the coaches will present some stuff and uh, um, you know, we'll kind of go from there. Uh, we'll be, uh, well, let me go ahead and share a screen here and, and we'll get this thing going. Okay. All right. So, what we're going to cover today is uh, the athletic department's kind of return to sports plan. Uh, it's, um, well, I'll, I'll get into that. We're also going to talk about uh, the different phases of the plan, uh, something that we call entry protocol. Uh, what we're going to do if we have a positive test, we'll talk about social distancing. We'll talk about masks. We'll talk about cleaning. We'll talk about all the information, uh, the restrictions regarding locker rooms, uh, what we expect from players and what you can expect from us. And uh, obviously, we'll, we'll address questions. And on the topic of questions, um, what, what we have is in a chat box, if you're, if you're able to do that, we got Coach Reese kind of monitoring uh, the chat box. So if you have a question, we really like you to put it in that chat box if you're able to. Um, that way, we can uh, kind of keep a record of all the questions that have had, uh, been asked, and then we can answer them. We'll put them up nicely in a typed uh, email. We'll send them out to you guys. That way uh, you have those so you can refer back to those if necessary. Uh, but also using the, the, the chat box kind of just keeps things moving along. Um, so that's kind of how we'll do it. If uh, we need you to clarify, we'll ask you to unmute and you can ask your question out in person. Um, but uh, you know, uh, what we're just trying to do is just try to, to kind of streamline this thing. And uh, it, like I said, if we need to, we'll... Uh, uh, we'll ask you to unmute and ask your question and, and kind of go from there. So um, we'll get going. Okay, obviously, or maybe, yeah, it is. It should be obvious that our number one priority is the safety of your kids and our coaches, okay? Uh, the athletic department put together uh, a return to sports plan, and it's based on those three recommendations right there. Uh, that's the National Federation of High School Sports, the Indiana Department of Education, and the Indiana High School Athletic Association. So all three of those, um, uh, those, those, uh, I'm trying to think of the word, but th those, um, all three of those have worked into this, this plan. Obviously there's CDC guidelines that went into this as well. Okay. Uh, our plan then had to be approved by the Indiana, uh, Indiana Department of Health and then our Whiting School Board. And all of this stuff uh, will be available on our website, uh, whitingfootball.com. It, it'll be up in about a day. OK. How does the plan work? Basically, uh, it's divided into three phases and those are the dates of the phase. And you can see there that July 6 is the very first one. Um, and they, they work. Uh, the first phase is a two week deal. Uh, second phase is a little bit longer than that. And then the third phase is a little bit to be determined. Now, a few things that you're going to see that occurs throughout each phase is those five constants down there. We'll have entry protocol, which we'll talk about here in a minute. Uh, there'll be social distancing when possible. There'll be masks when possible. Obviously, uh, rigorous cleaning and locker room restrictions. So all those things you're going to see 
throughout the entire, uh, throughout each phase. Okay, so the phases themselves, they're kind of similar, I guess, to the Indiana Back on Track plan that Governor Holcomb kind of put out. Uh, it's based a little bit around the timeline, as I said. And as we progress through each phase, um, you know, obviously the, the restrictions begin to lessen. Okay, but again, regardless of the phase, those five constants kind of are going to remain uh, throughout all of it. Okay, uh, the first phase was July 6th through July 19th. Um, a, a brand new IHSAA physical is required. So the IHSA kind of put out something that you can use last year's physicals. Uh, if you had one, uh, our school board and we fully support uh, came up with, with uh, that we all were requiring all of our students uh, to get a new physical. Um, I think it, it, it's the best way to go about it. Um, so that, that's the deal with that. Obviously with anything in the summer, participation is voluntary. So uh, if your child chooses not to show up, uh, that, that's, that is okay, it is voluntary. Um, face coverings. Face coverings are required uh, when able. So we'll talk a little bit of, uh, more about that, but uh, uh, I guess you can kind of, you know, if, if kids are, are sprinting, uh, we're not gonna require them to, to wear a mask. We'll, we'll talk more about that. Uh, we'll social, uh, social distance uh, when necessary. Uh, we'll, we'll do this thing, which we call entry protocol. I'll get into that. Um, I just say uh, we have no contact during this first phase, meaning the kids uh, cannot wear shoulder pads and helmets and hit each other. Okay. Um, that's defined by the IHSA and that's a rule that, you know, that, that, that goes back way before all this. Uh, our equipment will be clean before and after use. Um, there'll be no locker rooms available in phase one. And we'll talk about how we'll, we'll, we'll manage that. We'll have restrooms available, obviously, with social distancing. Uh, medically fragile students need to take special precautions, and those special precautions precautions are in the plan, uh, which you were sent in the email. Every night, uh, clothing needs to go home and washed uh, every single night, so a kid technically cannot wear the same thing two days in a row if it has not been washed. Okay, again, um, you know, that, that shouldn't be a problem. Um, CDC social distancing guidelines are enforced. Facilities and equipment clean daily. Uh, we'll have plenty of hand sanitizer. Each student will have an individually numbered water bottle. So I'll talk a, a little bit more about that, but basically every kid will be given a, a Gatorade water bottle with a number on it. That'll be that kid's water bottle throughout the entire year. Um, so if your kid's no, uh, water bottle is number five, he'll have that same water bottle each and every day. At the end of the day, he'll throw it in. Um, in a big bucket, we'll throw them in the dishwasher and they'll get cleaned uh, with the detergent in a dishwasher, okay? And in phase one, there's no competition between schools. So we're not gonna go and uh, you know drive to Munster High School and scrimmage them um, during phase one. So and any questions, that's a lot there, I get it. Uh, but any questions regarding phase one um, that maybe can kind of relate to that? If so, get in that chat box and I will address it. Now phase two, phase two is a little bit longer and you can see phase two actually goes into the football season. So August 3rd is the official start date for football. Okay, August 3rd. So that means phase two starts, uh, excuse me, July 20th. It works through August 14th, which is a Friday. And that's about two weeks into the actual season. During that time, uh, we still have uh, stuff that we need to do for entry. We can utilize locker rooms at 50% capacity, so meaning we can't all 40 or 50 of us get in there at the same time. Um, contact is allowed, meaning we can wear shoulder pads and helmets, um, and we can hit each other. But again, during that time, there's no competition. So again, we can't get in a bus and drive to Munster High School. Now we can compete amongst ourselves. Uh, you know, we can do a, a green and white game if we choose, or we can scrimmage at practice. Uh, we can do all that stuff. We just can't be involved with another school during that time. Okay, that's kind of phase two. Um, again, I know I'm going through them quickly, but uh, I think more of the meat and potatoes of it is just a little bit kind of down the line from here. Now, phase three, um, really the big thing with phase three, it starts August 15th, and that's uh, a Saturday, and that's coincidentally our uh, scrimmage with Highland. 
Okay, and phase three starts at August 15th, and it's going to continue to run until someone that gets paid more money than me decides when phase three is over. Uh, again, there's entry protocol. We can compete. Spectators, media, vendors, all that good stuff can start being at games. However, you know, so, uh, mass gathering guidelines by the CDC need to be followed. That's why uh, Coach Greer uh, gets paid the big bucks. He'll determine what, uh, uh, what the stadium looks like uh, on game days. Um, so that's kind of phase three. And you can see how each phase begins to uh, – the, the restrictions kind of begin to lessen a little bit. Now, I've been talking about entry protocol, entry protocol. What, what exactly does that mean? Okay, so the way we're going to do it uh, for Whiting football, and it could be different if uh, you have a child in, in cross country or volleyball, um, this is how we're going to do it in football. But, again, it's based on our athletic department's return to sports guidelines. So students are going to arrive in masks uh, at st uh, staggered times based on no car on, on cohorts. So what's happening is we have put students in cohorts or groups, okay? They will remain in those groups the entire first phase, okay? We have not shared the cohorts with the kids yet. We will do that. Um, so each kid will know exactly which cohort they belong into, okay? So students will arrive in masks, at sta uh, staggered times based on their cohorts. Okay, once they, uh, they get into, and you can see I got a little map down there, okay? Uh, and they're gonna kinda, this is all at the football field um, in the main gate, that, that's where all this kinda happens. So the kids will come in and there'll be a station set up, actually two stations set up for temperature checks. So we'll use a, uh, um, a thermometer, um, not, obviously not one that, that uh, is, is in the mouth, but more, uh, what do you call those? Uh, <laughs> infrared. Infrared, big word, big word there. Infrared thermometer. Uh, we'll take it on the forehead. We will record uh, the child's temperature. After that, there is a questionnaire, uh, a questionnaire, yeah, a questionnaire that needs to be uh, completed based on symptoms. We'll look at that questionnaire here in a second. So basically, the kid will come get his temperature checked, he'll move over, and a coach is going to ask them or ask him a series of questions. Once that student answers those series of questions, they're immediately going to go into a bathroom to wash their hands. They'll exit the bathroom, they'll pick up their individually numbered water bottle, and they'll go to a predetermined spot on the field, like a corner of the field, and they'll social distance and hang out with their buddies until activities kind of begin. Okay, so again, they'll come out, uh, come in, they'll get a temperature check, answer that uh, the questions, and they'll immediately go to the bathroom, wash their hands, grab the water bottle, go on to the field. So that the questionnaire I've been talking about, what is it? Well, first off, it is a uh, one of the questions is, does the child have a fever uh, above 100.3? Okay. If the child has a fever uh, of above 100.3, we're going to put them, we're, we're going to, we're going to put them off to the side and we're going to test it again in a few minutes and we're going to verify our reading. If that kid has a fever above 100.3, that insulin going to be sent home. Okay. And then they'll answer a series of yes or no questions. Does your child, you can read them there, but does your child have a cough, muscle pain, headache, uh, new loss of taste or smell? Any of these symptoms that are out of the ordinary, okay? So if a kid, you know, um, in the morning has allergies and he's had it for a month, well, you kind of know that. But if it's something that is out of the ordinary that has just began to develop, that is where we have to, to uh, you know, kind of take issue, okay? So here's what I sort of suggest that it probably should not come to this point. So if a child wakes up and doesn't feel good, don't wait for us to tell that child to go home. Should not come to the field if has any of these symptoms or it has a temperature, okay? So a pre-screening, uh, you know, obviously it, it, it's a lot better 
than coming to the field with these symptoms. So, you know, obviously we have to kind of base things on trust. Uh, but again, we're all here to make sure that, you know, everyone is safe. Well, pre-screen at home. If a kid wakes up and doesn't feel good or thinks he might have a fever, check it. Check it with a thermometer. If you don't have a thermometer, then I suggest that you go out and, and get one. Okay, again, let's just do our best to keep everybody safe. Okay. Uh, coaches are going through the same thing. All right. So whatever the kid is dealing with, the coach, you know, we have to have uh, temperature checks. Uh, you know, we, we deal the same thing. Well, if a kid is sent home with one of these symptoms, here's what has to happen in, for, in order for that kid to come back. So if the kid is sent home with a symptom, say he has developed a, a cough, all right? The kid does not get tested. Your child, you don't take the kid, to, the child to get tested. Okay, sorry there, I got an email from a parent. Okay, so the kid doesn't necessarily, the kid goes home, uh, doesn't have a fever for 72 hours, no other symptoms have, have cropped up. Uh, after 10 calendar days, that child can return. So again, if a kid is sent here with a cough or he's sent home with a cough after 10 days without any other symptoms, that child can come back. That is an untested, like, so you did not take him to the doctor, but those are, that, that is just what you observed at home. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So, you know, if a child is sent home on a Monday, child sent home on a Monday, we'll see them, um, what, probably like Wednesday or Thursday of the following week. Okay, so that, that's kind of where we're at with that. Now, we send a kid home or a kid has a positive test somehow. Okay, so, you know, you, your, your, your child wakes up sick one day, uh, you take him to get tested, and he is tested positive. Uh, and he has symptoms. In order for uh, for that child to come back and be amongst the population, again, he has no longer has a, a fever without a fever reducer. 14 calendar days uh, have passed since the uh, symptoms appeared. The child has two negative tests and is released by a health care provider. So obviously that's the most important one. We're not going to even talk to you unless you have a release from uh, your doctor. Okay, that, that goes with an injury. As soon as you go see a doctor with an injury, you can't practice until we have a release from that doctor. It's the same thing. As soon as you test positive, uh, you, will be, uh, you will not be able to come back until you're released by your healthcare uh, provider. Um, again, if you test positive but there's no symptoms, once again, you still have 14 calendar days and you have to be released by a healthcare provider. Again, these are what comes directly from uh, Whiting Athletic Department return to sports plan. Right, can I say something too? Um, yep, go ahead. These, these also, these requirements are following suit also to if a kid tests positive during a school day too. So they're coming directly from the, the return to school plan as well. So they're all the same, they're all mimicked in the same fashion. Okay, just wanted to make that clear that we weren't doing something different than what would have been done for school. There you go. Uh, a question was asked uh, in the chat about, um, you, know, uh, you know, working out for football that there could, there could be some, some soreness. Um, that, that is definitely a possibility. So what, what I can tell you with that is there is normal soreness and then there is achiness. So like, for instance, if the kid did several push-ups and, um, you know, this area of his body uh, up by his shoulder is sore from doing push-ups, that would be different than a general body ache. That's the best that I can tell you. If you're unsure or, you know, you, you want to be safe, keep your child home. Okay, so the, what exactly happens if a player tests positive? So a student uh, on, the, uh, on our football team tests positive what happens. First off, it is up to the family to report it to the school, okay? We're not, you know, that, that's the only way that this works. So the family has to, to report it to the school. 
once our school and uh, administration is notified, they're going to contact the Lake County Board of Health. Now, if we are in phase one, that cohort, that group that that uh, student athlete that tested positive is in, that entire cohort is shut down for 14 days from the date of the positive test. Okay, so let's say Johnny that's in cohort one tested positive for COVID-19. Everyone in cohort one, including the coach that's responsible for cohort one, is quarantined for 14 days uh, from the date of the positive test. Okay? Phase two or three, if we have a, because now in phase two and three, we are no longer in cohorts. In phase two or three, if a member of the team, player, coach, has tested positive for COVID-19, the entire team is quarantined from 14 days uh, from the date of the positive test. Uh, Lori, I see your, your question. Uh, I don't have the cohorts in front of me, uh, but I kind of um, kind of wouldn't, uh, we probably need to discuss that, but Lori's question was, are siblings in the same cohort? Um, I don't have uh, the cohorts in front of me, so I don't know exactly if they are or not. Okay, I would assume that parents uh, prefer their child in the same cohort. Lori, what's your feeling on that? 15 days. Yes, because otherwise you would have to quarantine both of them if they're in different cohorts. Because if Wyatt's okay. been exposed, then John's been exposed by being home and then possibly exposing two his co other two cohorts. cohorts. Double <laughs> trouble. <laughs> that Double trouble. Okay, uh, that, then that, that's, uh, uh, we'll, we'll look at our cohorts and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. So th thank you for that. That's a great question. You're welcome. Um, question from the chat. Okay, what if a student uh, gets a positive scan upon entry into practice, is sent home, but two or three days later, they go to the doctor and test for COVID-19, and that test comes back negative. So, uh, Coach Green, you may want to uh, to jump in here, but because we we started to discuss this today, Coach Greer. Um, yes. So, if a child go, if we send a child home because they have a fever or one of those things that we're screening for and you take them to the doctor and they test negative, if they, I believe, according to the back to school plan, they need to have a note from the doctor saying that they tested negative and then they can return. Does that help? Okay. Um, so that, that's kind of, uh, the questions are that's kind of the slides that are they're kind of dedicated to uh, you know symptoms and testing uh, if there's more questions you know about that please you know feel free to ask uh, I think I'm gonna move on uh, and if there's something in the chat box that we need to address I'll be happy to do that Brett you can share my email address too in case they have questions regarding um, the back to okay. school entry plan and stuff like that. That way they could just come straight to me instead of bothering you. All right, sounds good. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, so obviously, you know, you know, there's a lot of talk in the last three months or whatever it is about social distancing. Um, we're going to do our best uh, to social distance throughout the entire uh, season, okay? Uh, and, you know, clearly it's a skill that not everyone has mastered. And I'm not talking about just children but you can go out into the world and you see adults that have no idea that there apparently is a pandemic going on and that we should be social distancing. Uh, so it's a skill that we're, you know, we're gonna continue to kind of teach and reinforce with, with the kids, okay? Um, we're gonna social distance as much as possible, more than is required by our back to school plan. Um, you know, in drill work, we're not gonna just have piles of kids just hanging out together. Uh, that doesn't make sense. There's no reason to have a pile of kids just waiting uh, to perform a rep and a drill. 
Okay. Uh, so we're going to do our best when, when possible that the kids wear masks until it's time for their rep. Uh, we won't have kids paired up until the very last second. Uh, so we'll do things to kind of keep kids apart until their rep comes up. But again, uh, you know, we, we are playing football, so we can't do it all the time. But when it's possible and necessary, uh, we definitely will do that. You know, things like huddles, we're not going to really do. We don't need to have a big pile of kids just hanging out, waiting for a play call. Uh, both our offense and our defense uh, and our special teams all rely on not huddling. Um, we're not going to really spend a ton of time in our locker room. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about this a little bit later, but yeah, we're, we're not going to just go and hang out in the locker room. Uh, those days are kind of over. Uh, we'll talk about some ways that we will, uh, you know, kind of handle that stuff. Um, you know, in terms of having meetings, uh, you know, we'll do small group meetings. We'll try to host meetings outside as much as possible. Uh, we'll do them in a larger space, like a cafeteria, an auditorium, a uh, place where the kids can kind of spread out. Again, you know, 40 kids in one locker room, um, you know, it's not, it just, it isn't, uh, it isn't ideal uh, now. Uh, in terms of bus rides, we're still waiting for details uh, from our transportation department, and that's not throwing the transportation department under the bus. Ah, look at that, I didn't even plan that. But uh, that's just the reality of it, that they have a huge, um, you know, a huge problem in front of them, how they're going to um, service you know, as many kids uh, throughout the day and then a football team of 40 or 50 kids. Uh, so there's some ideas that have been out there uh, that we have presented, that the transportation department has presented. I can tell you that uh, the number of kids on a bus will be less. I can tell you that kids will be required to wear a mask on a bus. Uh, but anything further than that, I don't, I don't have the answer. Um, and one that I thought was interesting uh, there will be no celebrations. Uh, it'll be prohibited by the IHSAA. So, uh, you know, fist bumps and, and hugs and high fives cannot happen. Okay, moving on to masks. Uh, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're required in, in phase one to wear a mask whenever possible. Again, we're going to do it whenever possible throughout the entire season. Um, you know, obviously in locker rooms, team meetings, all those kind of things, uh, we're going to require a mask. And when it's just not, uh, when social distancing is not possible, that's when we're going to do our best to get a mask on. Okay. One of the things that, you know, we, we received the training on it today is, is how we're going to clean equipment, how things get sanitized each and every day. So locker rooms, excuse me, bathrooms will get sanitized between cohort entry. Um, you know, equipment that gets utilized. Uh, yeah. Yep. Je Jennifer asked about team dinners. I, <laughs> I'm going to tell you what, I got a list of 500 things to do in team dinners. Unfortunately, they're like 476. So I don't, uh, I assume team dinners will not uh, be able to happen this year, but I, I don't, uh, I don't know for sure. I can't see how it does happen. Um, maybe we can make some alternatives. I, I don't know at this point. Um, it's, uh, it's, a, it's kind of a shame. Okay, uh, kind of back to the cleaning. So, you know, any uh, uh, equipment that gets utilized uh, will be sanitized before and after, uh, uh, after practice. Uh, player equipment will be sanitized. So like a football helmet. Every day that the kid wears a football helmet, will, it will be sanitized. Every day a kid wears a pair of shoulder pads. It's going to be sanitized. Uh, our, our turf will be sanitized. All facilities, locker rooms, bathrooms, anything that has people inside of it uh, will be cleaned daily. Uh, I talked about the individual water bottles. <clears throat> Excuse me. Individual water bottles every day uh, will be cleaned in, a, uh, in our dishwasher. So you can see we're, we're kind of going above and beyond. Uh, probably what is, you know, um, what is necessary uh, to make sure that every part of the stadium and equipment that a child comes in contact with will be cleaned um, and sanitized. Part of this are uh, our locker room restrictions. So in phase one, there is no locker room. 
So uh, what we'll do, if you can remember back to our entry protocol, basically kids will have access to a bathroom uh, for very briefly. So they come in, get their temperature checked, get the questionnaire, they go to the bathroom and wash their hands. Okay, and then if they need to use a bathroom, um, yep, if they're doing, uh, um, if they have to use the bathroom or whatever throughout the, uh, the practice, the, the child will go in that bathroom and uh, uh, and then after we'll again have to sanitize that bathroom, okay? Um, after phase one, we are allowed to use the locker room at 50% capacity, kind of as I touched on. Um, however, we're not going to go and just hang out in the locker room. As Again, as I said, you, kids are going to go in. They're going to, you know, take care of their pers personal items. They're going to grab their equipment. They're going to use, you know, use the washroom, wash the hands, and then that's it. So we have some ideas of, you know, how possibly move in a locker room outside. We have some benches. We have chairs. We have some things where maybe we can do some of that stuff outside. Um, uh, but, you know, just hanging out in the locker room is not going to necessarily work. We'll also utilize the middle school locker room. Um, so, you know, half in one, half in the other, again, to, to keep kids separate as much as possible okay so that's uh, uh that's kind of what it with locker rooms okay so throughout all this obviously you know we can do our part uh and at the football field and make sure that um um you know we're cleaning we're social distancing we're wearing masks we're doing all that stuff but kids kind of need to do their part as well and if your kid is not with you or listening to this presentation, um, you know, it, it probably would be beneficial if you kind of speak to them a little bit. And I'm sure that most of you are, but it's important that we're being safe outside of football, right? We want to try to avoid just being in, in large gatherings, uh, wear masks. And I know most kids probably don't want to do it, but I'm just going to tell you that uh, it's going to be a part of their life for, for a little bit now. So now's a good time as ever to start wearing a mask. Uh, and obviously, the, you know, social distancing, uh, those things are all important. And in order for this thing to work, kids have to kind of do their part uh, and be safe outside of football. It doesn't matter if the, the, uh, a kid um, gets COVID from football practice or outside of football practice, uh, everybody's going to pay the price for that. So we want to do our best. Um, to ensure that we're safe and that the kids are safe. Um, so, yep, that's what we got to do. Uh, they, they need to follow the return to play guidelines, meaning, um, you know, they need to wear masks. They need to social distance at practice. All these things I outlined today, they need to follow. Okay. We have great kids. We don't ever have disrespectful kids or defiant kids or any of those kind of things. So I'm going to assume that if I tell a, a kid or have to remind a kid, Hey man, you need to put on your mask but there's not going to be any issues with that. Okay. Um, so, you know, obviously hand washing, we've been hearing about hand washing since March 16th or whatever, all this went down. Uh, so hand washing is important. Please don't just walk through the bathroom without washing your hands. Uh, clothes need to be washed every, every night. Uh, if a, if a, you know, kid wears the same couple things, uh, to practice uh, every couple days, you know, that stuff just needs to, to make sure that it gets washed. Um, you know, this is probably a good opportunity, parents, to teach your child how to do laundry. I remember uh, uh, growing up playing football, my mom hated the smell of my clothes, so she made me, she taught me how to do laundry. Uh, so I've kind of been doing it since I was like 16. So that was a good opportunity to pass it off. Um, I think every day is probably a, a good idea. Not, I think this is what's going to have to happen, but every day, kids need to bring a bag with required items every day. Sneakers every day, cleats every day, two masks every day. Yep, a primary and a backup mask. Crazy. All right. So the athletic department, <clears throat> do, do I have this? Uh, nope. The athletic department uh, is going to provide masks for kids. They may or may not be here by uh, July 6th. So kids should have already uh, kind of made arrangements. <clears throat> Uh, to have a mask so uh you know bring a bring your primary mask and have one in your bag in case one breaks uh something happens wh whatever the case may be 
Okay. Coach Jennings. Uh, yeah. You yeah. have a question um, with Lake County numbers or numbers, COVID numbers going up. What is the chance of football being stopped? So the very first thing I wanted to say tonight and I didn't was everything is the same until it's different. What does that mean? It means we can sit here and we can talk about all this stuff and everything we're going to do. But the bottom line is everything can change in an instant. So we were just talking about this today. The coaches were, we have a great plan. We have all this stuff, but the bottom line is we're kind of at the mercy of everything else of the, uh, of, of society, the environment, our County, the state, there is a possibility that government, they may say we're, we're shutting this down. We're not doing this. I, uh, in, the, in the Indiana Department of Education or IHSA, a multitude of things can happen. <clears throat> so while we have this tremendous plan in place, and I really do mean that, I think it's, I think it's phenomenal, but it all is almost out of our hands, almost. So we can do our part to make sure this all goes, you know, as, as to plan and as safely as possible. But we're really at the mercy of people who make the decisions. Okay. Um, you know, as I, I said a little bit earlier, as soon as there's a positive test among the team, we're done for 14 days. Okay. Now in July, that might not be such a big deal. So we shut it down for a couple of weeks in July, but imagine week four in football, right? Week four in football, all of a sudden we get a, a, a positive case or our opponents get a positive case on a Wednesday, right? So now that game is done that Friday. Or we get a positive case on Wednesday. That game for us is done on Friday. And the following game. And the following game. So all this is fluid. All this can change in a heartbeat. And that is what's important to understand. I don't know if you know anything about football coaches, but one thing we don't like is to relinquish control. And I think it's taught a lot of football coaches that it's just a game and most of this is out of our control. So that's kind of my soapbox moment. I hope that answers your question. Things can change in a heartbeat and I don't, I don't necessarily have the answers for it. Okay, so every day bring a duffel bag, in there, have sneakers, your cleats. We need both. Don't come in slides and cleat and cleats. Bring sneakers, bring cleats. Have a couple masks. Probably doesn't hurt to bring an extra t-shirt. Um, you know, you can bring a water bottle as well. I know I told you we're going to provide one, but I'm just throwing that out there. Um, so that's that's kind of uh, the deal. Again, no lock rooms in phase one. Okay, so I talked about what the players. Uh, are doing, coaches uh, have to do their part as well. And I'm going to tell you that we're 100% on board to keeping kids safe. I don't think I would, honestly, I would put our guys up against any coaching staff in the state. We have spent weeks and weeks talking about how we're going to handle this, how we're going to move forward. Um, coaches meet every Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday evening from seven till whenever it ends um, to talk about, you know, uh, how, how we're going to, how we're going to handle this stuff. So uh, we're going to do our part to keep your kids safe. K uh, coaches, they're going to be masked up. That's uh, a no brainer. I told you we're going to offer, offer disposable masses in case a kid forgets, you know, I want kids to be at practice. All right. So if a kid forgets practice or forgets his mask, you know, yep, it's a no-no, but we're going to offer a mask uh, for that kid. We're not going to just send that kid out and say, "Yep, oh, sorry, man." Okay, um, so we'll, you know, we're off. We're, we're we're here to help. If any of you uh, that have been around our program know that our, our kind of our attendance policy is kind of the the bedrock of of our program, um, it's going to be have to be modified. All right, um, and you know, I'm going to talk about the attendance policy a little bit in the second presentation tonight, but uh, you know, we're not here to penalize a kid for staying home because they're unsure of their symptom. That's kind of, uh, it's counterproductive of what we're trying to do here. So we'll have an attendance policy. It's going to be modified. 
uh, I'll be honest, I don't have all the details worked out. You know, we were just given this policy, the uh, back to school plan policy um, at the end of last week. Um, that's because it has to go through several stages of, of approval and everything else. So we're going to do our part uh, in terms of, of the attendance policy. Uh, obviously, I talked about limit team gatherings. And honestly, guys, we're, we're here uh, with, with a kids first mentality. Okay. Football. Yep. Us football coaches love football, but football is, is not the end all be all. So we're here for kids, regardless of if we were coaching football or soccer, or we were band directors, we're about kids. And anything that arises is going to be made with a kid's first mentality. That is all that I have from this presentation. That was a ton of stuff thrown at you in 40 minutes. Okay. Uh, as I said, uh, our... Uh, this is going to be recorded. This has been recorded. We'll get it on the website, uh, weddingfootball.com. It'll be out there. Um, so you're welcome to look back at this. Um, you know, again, this is, you know, this is, none of this is a secret. Not, so we're there to put it out. I'll answer questions. You want to text me or call me. My, my phone number is readily available. If not, uh, um, uh, you, you have it. Cause I think I sent it in the email today. Um, Call me, email me, and I'll be happy to talk about it. And if I don't have the answer, uh, I'll send you to someone who does. Um, so I have about 90% of the information. Uh, the other 10% is kind of that information that's still in limbo that we're waiting on approvals and all that kind of stuff, okay? Uh, so that's the COVID portion of tonight's presentation. Any questions that I need to address? No questions. So the second portion of this is really our first year player parent orientation. Um, if that doesn't include you, you're welcome to leave. If you want to hang out and look at me talk again uh, and see some of the other coaches' faces, that's up to you. I won't be uh, offended if you want to leave and go hang out uh, with, with your family because you haven't seen them enough in three and a half months. So go hang out with your family, uh, whatever the case may be. Thank you, Mrs. Davenport. Appreciate it. Okay, guys, we'll, we'll take like a, yeah, just a couple minutes. If you guys need break. something from me, please let me know. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you have. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll get Coach Greer's email out there so you guys have it if you have questions as well. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. We're going to take just a, a couple minute, uh, yep, you got it, a couple minute break just uh, so I can get some water and then we'll get rolling on the second portion, guys. Okay. Yep. No problem. Thank you for, yep. Thanks for coming. 